Have you ever been hanging out with a friend who tells you something so batch crazy and illogical that you simply nod your head and go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Cool story, Hansel. But secretly you're thinking, there's no freaking way this is true. I'm gonna go look this up the second I get home. Well, that's this video. By now, you've likely heard the story or at least seen the headlines that responsible home buyers with good credit will now be paying more for their mortgage than buyers with low credit. Now, let me tell you, there is one mind bending twist to all of this that nobody has uncovered and discussed thus far. So today, let's unpack what's true, what's been politicized to get people fired up and ultimately get down to the bottom of a very complicated subject. So stick around. Okay, while this isn't a political show, this subject has been heavily politicized to the point that both sides are twisting the truth to fit each other's agendas. So let's start off with the obvious Republican side of the table. Republicans are claiming this is a tax on the middle class and penalizes responsible people while rewarding irresponsibility. Essentially, socialism at its finest. On the surface, I have to admit, it's quite the provoking argument. As you'll see, it's difficult to refute some of this argument. Now, the Biden administration is touting this as a way to assist lower income families and individuals of color. Now, according to Newsweek, which quoted Finmasters, which is a personal finance blog, the average credit score in white communities is a 727. Meanwhile, Hispanic communities are a 667 and black communities are only at a 627. Apparently, only 25% of FHA homebuyers are people of color. So Biden's approach to improve this ratio is to basically be like Robin Hood and steal from the rich and give to the poor, except in this case, you're not stealing from the rich, you're simply stealing from the responsible and stimulating the less responsible. The only simple part of this entire situation is the political ideology, meaning, do you believe the government should do whatever it takes to improve minority home ownership, even if it comes at the cost of everyone who has been responsible? Or do you believe that regardless of color, people should be rewarded for acting responsibly? I can't wait to read these comments. All right, now that we've got the ugly politics out of the way, let's unpack this complex financial topic into terms that make sense for all of us. Now, first of all, this actually came to fruition in January. However, these changes didn't go into effect until May 1st. It's just that nobody cared until recently. Digging further into the truth, whether home buyers realize this or not, the changes were already implemented quite some time ago. May 1st is just the date that Fannie and Freddie purchased these mortgages. So really, this was occurring back to at least early April. Now, what exactly are these changes? Okay, the actual changes are regarding what's referred to as LLPA or loan level price adjustments. See, all lenders and investors care about is risk. The riskier of a borrower you are, the more your loan will cost you since that investor is now assuming more risk. The way investors price loans is with these LLPAs. The lower the credit score, the more costly your loan will be to obtain. So ideally, you want to have a credit score over 780 and put 20% or more down. By meeting this criteria, there's no LLPAs to even worry about, none. You get the perfect loan. Now, as long as your credit score decreases along with your down payment, investors begin to assume more risk and charge accordingly as a result. Now, one of my favorite YouTubers, Andre Jick, gave a great analogy. Think of loans like dating. Ideally, you want to be six feet tall with a six figure income. Now, while I'm six one, he's only five foot seven. Now, under these new changes, it's like I've just become six feet flat and now he's five foot eight. But there's two parts to the story that we truly need to address. First is the misconception that buyers with lower credit scores will also pay less than buyers with higher credit scores. Now, as you'll see shortly, this is 100% absolute bullshit. It's far from true. But now let me get to the mind blowing part of this equation that has been completely perverted simply to make a stronger argument. The analogy, which is true, but highly misleading is this. 
Buyers with a 740 FICO score and 15 to 20 percent down now face an increase of 75 basis points or 0.75 percent. This is 100 percent true though. This is the part where we turn me from six foot one down to six feet. Now, on the other hand of the spectrum, the buyer with a 620 FICO score with only 5% down now gets a 1.75% discount, thus turning the guy who's 5'7 into 5'8. Now, this sounds terrible. This sounds utterly devoid of logic. In fact, this pretty much makes it sound like I should just go out and lower my credit score and lower my down payment. But here's the twist. I had my lender run real numbers to see how this viral example actually plays out. First, we took a 679 credit score with only 5% down. The raw interest rate came to 6.625%. Okay, fine. Next, we used the 740 FICO score with 15% down. While the rate was better, it only came in at 6.5%. At first, I was pissed off. So with better credit and more down payment, I was barely getting a better rate than someone with poor credit and little down. But then I managed to really make a left turn into crazy town. What if I compare apples to apples instead? Forget about the down payment. Let's just compare credit scores. It turned out that by lowering the 740 credit scores down payment from 15% to only 5%, the interest rate went from 6.5% to only 6.125. How in the hell could that be, right? Now, I understood why the media used this specific analogy. Remember earlier when I said that investors charge more for more risk? Well, in the most bizarre plot twist, it turns out that a higher down payment can be more risky for investors because of the mortgage insurance coverage. Stay with me now, because this starts to get a little complicated. On the screen now is a chart from Fannie Mae that likely no one's ever looked at or cares about unless you're a mortgage banker. Now, in the red box, you can see the chart for fixed rate mortgages over 20 years. This chart illustrates how much mortgage insurance covers investors in the event of a default. Now, in the first column, you can see that down payments between 15 to 20 percent are covered up to 12 percent. On the right, you have down payments of only three to 5%. This is covered up to 35%. What this actually means is insane. With 15% down plus the 12% mortgage insurance, that means an investor is covered up to only 27%. Backwards, as long as that loan isn't worth less than 73% of its original value, the investor is completely covered. Now, with only, say, 5% down, the mortgage insurance covers 35% for a total of 40%, meaning as long as the value of the mortgage isn't worth less than 60% of the original, the investor is fully covered and insured. So 5% down covers me as an investor up to 60% of the loan value. But with 15% down, I'm only covered up to 73%. Simply put, investors have more risk with 15% down versus only 5% down. Now, I realize this is difficult to understand and basically makes no damn sense, but this is a much bigger argument than the one we're even discussing here in the video to begin with. Now, to muck this up even further, consider this. Right now, there's a huge debate going on because FHFA, which came up with all these damn rules, is now trying to make it more expensive for borrowers with debt to income ratios over 40%. Now, one could argue that poor people and minorities are the ones in more debt than their counterparts, right? The point I'm trying to make is this. Personally, I think America has an accountability problem. Too many Americans aren't accountable for their actions, and we've become a more, let's just say, entitled country, expecting handouts over hard work. So while I don't think that it's responsible and hardworking Americans should in any way be penalized for simply being responsible, I also don't think that mortgage insurance should be more expensive for hardworking people who diligently saved to put down more money down on their home. Meanwhile, how can Biden and the FHFA claim to be helping low-income and minorities 
when in the same breath, they're trying to make it more difficult for them by penalizing borrowers with higher debt ratios. I think you see where this is all going, right? Basically, it's all bullshit. Don't fall for the sound bites. Don't fall for the political agendas. Both sides here are massaging numbers and misrepresenting facts to suit their own agenda. It's all politics as usual. Well guys, I hope you managed to stay awake for this deep dive and I hope I was able to break this down enough to make it understandable. Please share this video with your friends and family, click to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Deuces.